that's from Thailand. This video is going to show you how this fuse board for my solar panel works. Basically, this is a grid tie inverter, and a grid tie inverter means it actually goes and links up to the grid. But having a grid tie system means if the power goes off, the grid tie inverter stops putting power to the grid if it if you're not using all the power in your household. So therefore, any linesman or anybody working on the electrical installations on the lines is protected. It's a safety feature. Um, now I'll show you a photograph on the box. It basically just says you can plug that into the into a, a socket, and then that's all you need to do. But me being an electrician, oh uh, no, I've got to do everything safety, so everything's protected. So I'm going to go through everything that's on the fuse fuse board. Um, as I say, there'll be many people saying that's the not a right way to do it by just plugging it into the system because there's all sorts of things that can happen. And that's true and so for safety wise I've just put it all the other bits and pieces in it. So like I said I'm going to go through the actually how everything works here. Like I said in the previous video the cables from the solar panel come through the conduit up there, goes through some plastic trunking, goes through a 30 amp isolator switch so this switches everything off to do with the solar panel. And then it goes into the fuses, which I'll go through in a minute, the fuse board. So it goes through there, goes through to a 32 amp DC isolator switch and fuse. So if anything goes wrong, there's two fuses there and the main isolator switch, there's a fuse switch there. So that'll break as well. And then the cables come down there, run along through the trunk end and connect to the bottom of the inverter unit here and then at the top of the inverter that's where the electricity comes that's where you plug it into the socket so this socket is connected to the AC side of the of the fuse board so again I'm going to go through through with that and the power to that socket is from there goes all the way down there and at the minute it comes out to that socket I've got it plugged into an extension lead but what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a cable all the way from, from there, the AC switch and fuse switch. So it's going to come down there and it's going to run along the side of the house. I'm going to put it in conduit so it's protected. And then it's going to go be plugged into that wall socket all the time. So that's the, that's the next step that I'm going to do. But for now, we'll talk through this fuse board so and I'll just switch the fan off just to and I'll tell you why I put an extra fan in in a minute so here we go so what we have here is the income from the solar panels going to the live and the neutral going through a 30 30 amp fuse and then it comes through the fuse and it goes into the main isolator breaker switch, which is a 32 amp. Now it's a 32 amp, so if I add extra panels, it's gonna take care of that as well. So it's a live and the neutral coming into there. So what I've got also is a surge protection. So if, for instance, if electricity or lightning struck the solar panel, it would blow the inverter up. So you have a surge protection device. So the live and the neutral, the closest to its to its source which is at the bottom of that comes up goes into the top of the surge protection and then the earth cable comes from the bottom goes into the earth bar and then there's an earth going all the way down to the floor to an earth rod and I'll show you that a little bit later on so then the DC from the solar panels comes through the the switch isolator switch and fuse comes down there and then it goes to the bottom. So it comes down there and it goes, attaches to the bottom of the inverter. And then the inverter is plugged into this socket. So this socket is fed from the AC side. Now the AC side comes up through there, like I said, from the front of the house, that's, that cable comes up into here. It goes in the top of the fuse, which is a 16 amp fuse breaker switch. 
So if any problems happen, the fuse breaker switch will, uh, will switch everything off. So basically it comes into there and I've got it linked into a timer device. So it switches everything off in the board from six o'clock in the evening and it comes back on at seven o'clock on the morning time. So that means that the inverter isn't getting any power through the AC system during the night. Also protects everything as well. So if there's a lightning storm during the night, although it's got surge protection on there as well, it's just double protection for everything. So again, the, the timer switch goes up through there and goes to this socket and it switches the socket on. So, so then the inverter is plugged into there all the time. So as soon as the timer switch activates the, the electricity to that switch, to the socket switch, then everything's switched on. So again, surge protection here. So if we get a lightning strike on the house and the, and the, the, the surge goes through the house sockets, because we haven't got surge protection on the house. So I'll put this in here so that protects the inverter as well. If lightning strikes the cables near our house and a big surge comes through our household electricity, it'll come up here and it'll go through the surge protection. So that protects everything within the AC and the DC circuits. So yeah, there's a lot of safety in here. There's the main 30 amp isolator. There's the a 32 amp isolator switch fuse. There's two 30 amp um, fuses from the DC side. There's surge protection both on the DC side and surge protection on the AC side. Isolator switch and a uh, fuse switch so any problems and that switches it off as well so as you can see everything is earthed over here everything is hit everything is earthed here and including the cabinet the cabinet is earthed there and this extra fan that i've, I've put in here there's two fans in here also so when the grid tie inverter works it cools it down when it's working under maximum working conditions but as i said it, it never gets over 270 watts and it's a thousand watt grid tie inverter so the fans hardly come on anyway but when the temperature gets really really hot it might start coming on and off anyway but these cheap inverters the fans are not very good so for 125 baht i put a, another fan in it and what i've done so peak times i can just switch that in and it switches the fan on and that helps to cool the inverter as well. So that's a neat little cir circuit, neat little board, contains everything in there. All the cables are all tucked away so it's nice and clean. And then you've got the, the meter there which measures at the minute. So 24,150 watts I've had since I started using the board. And it just goes through the various cycles. 235 watts, that means it's showing the electricals current coming from the house at the minute there's it's 0, 0.0 amps so it's not making anything because the sun's gone um, and that's how many watts it would be showing if it was working so a neat little system and the earthing as you can see that the, the board is earthed and that is connected to the earth bar on the board and the solar panel that's earthed and it runs down and there's an earth rod in the ground and that's going to be covered over and a, an inspection hatch little made so it keeps that nice and safe so a neat little system if anybody's got any questions or queries about it please ask so protected from the elements nice little system over and above what it suggests on the box it basically it's a plug and play system you plug your solar panel into the inverter plug it into the household system and that's how they say it, it, it can work but me being an electrician from england i do it try to do everything correctly and in my mind that's super super safe so from les living the dream in thailand my solar little system bye for now